Rob, this is us, Glenn Lawrence McDonald, the funny yogi from Level Up Comedy. Hey, what's going on? And I am Patrick Michael Strange, your uh, captain of the NRW ship and Koslov. There you go. All right. Um, we are going to talk about Jordan Peele's latest masterpiece. Uh, if you watch Get Out, you know why I'm calling him, uh, why I'm calling his next film a masterpiece, because he's kind of like the new... Uh, guy in film. A lot of people are saying he's a new Hitchcock. He's a new this or that or whatever. He's fucking Jordan Peele. Yeah, he's 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 he's, he's, he's the next thing. Dude. I want to yeah. be the next him. Like he yeah. is amazing. He's brought film back to the point where you watch it and you're yes. like, wow. Let me pour over every frame of this film. I feel like he is bringing the art back into oh yeah film. So before we get into our review of us, I'm going to take you back to this past Christmas, this holiday season, when myself and my sister first watched the Us trailer that now is in theaters and everybody should check out and you'll hear our review in just a second. But here is me and my sister reacting to the first Us trailer. All right. The Loonies. That's a classic right there. It's Mbaku and um, uh, the Pita Nyanko. So we got I Black Panther here. It's about drugs. It's not about drugs. It's a dope song. Don't do drugs. Get in rhythm. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> Can't believe how big Dave got. You hear Dave got a boat? <laughs> He's kidding, right? He's not kidding. Hey, I think it's vodka clock. Oh, yeah. Where's Jason? Creepy man on the beach, don't walk with him. I didn't know if you were lost. Stick with me, and I'll keep you safe. There's a family in our driveway. It's probably the neighbors. But I'm scared of a family. Hi, can I help you? Zora, put your shoes on. If you want to get crazy, we can get crazy. But creepier. What are you people? Oh, it's us. What? They look exactly like us. Okay. They think like us. They know where we are. We need to move and keep moving. They won't stop until they kill us. Or we kill them. Was uh, my initial reaction? Uh, strange family. Strange family. <laughs> yes. So uh, it's kind of apropos that we're doing it now at this hour. It's past midnight. We've recorded a bunch of shows, but we had to give you our us review because uh, me and my boy Mac just saw this past weekend. Yeah. And I've been dying to talk to you about it. There are so many layers. I've been and, dying to talk about it myself. So uh, let's give, let's talk a little bit about the story, and then we'll give our thoughts. Um, I will say for myself before we. Uh, I'll, I'll throw it to you to talk right. about the, some of the story. I came into it uh, because of the strength of Get Out, wanting to break it down. You know, yeah. Get Out was a, a lot about racism. Right. This, uh, we didn't know because he wasn't giving it to us from the trailers. We just kind of knew here is one family seeing an evil version of themselves. Right. But what was kind of like, what was the message that Jordan wanted to say with this film? Mm-hmm. We really didn't know that. We just kind of knew it was a, this is going to be a cool ass horror film. And I kind of went into it trying to break everything down which i think took away a little bit of my experience right i enjoyed it immensely as a horror film but i think i could have would have enjoyed it more if i didn't just try to 
See, you analyze were, everything. Yeah, I was yeah. overanalyzing it. Well, so I'm, I'm, don't do that. It's just my measure. And before we continue, spoilers, 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 we're about to break it down. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's the thing about what Jordan Peele has done. Now, when you go into his films, you're not just looking to be entertained. You're looking to have your mind move. You're, yes. you're, you're, you're looking into it deeper than just what you're seeing on the screen. And that's an amazing thing to do, to go to a movie, a uh, popcorn movie, and, you know, a horror movie. Yeah. You don't normally go to a horror movie thinking, what am I going to get out of this? Mm-hmm. You know, and I feel like that's what he has brought to the table now. That's what he's bringing to Hollywood. That's what he is bringing to the American um, um, psyche. Mm-hmm. It's like, what what is this actually saying? Yeah. And this movie delivers. In my oh, opinion, yeah. it delivers. It's the story of a family. They go on vacation. Um, and they're, they're met by a murderous version of themselves. And we get to see where that comes from mm-hmm. and, and what that means. Now, there's super a lot of layers that, that go mm-hmm. with it. But like you said, we'll just take you through it. So the family, they go on vacation. Oh, before that, what it, the, the, there's like this real quick thing. If you don't catch it at the beginning, it kind of mm-hmm. helps guide you through the whole film the rabbits well, yeah it opens with rabbits and it op- opens up with some real truths mm-hmm. uh throughout the u.s there's a lot of abandoned tunnels abandoned uh, subway systems yes there's there's this whole underground complex that is beneath our feet but that we, we don't, don't pay know attention about. to yeah and then it, it leaves you with the tra- with the sentence which uh, is a very leading sentence it says um most of them don't have a use and then it's dot, dot, dot. Yes. So if most of them don't have a use, what do the ones that are abandoned have a use for? And then we get into My it. Brother. So that was uh, super cool. And that's the first point when I'm watching the film where I'm like, oh, he's about to do it again. Because that's a very, <laughs> that's a very leading sense. And then it goes into, um, there's like a, it's, you know, um, like a lab almost where there's just a bunch of bunnies yeah. and you're trying to figure out what's going on there. And that's and that was a kind of a great um showing too, where there's just a bunch of bunnies and then you see a little girl, she's going on vacation with her parents, she's real quiet, she wanders off. Oh, hold on, hold on. Before before she goes to the, the fair to the mm-hmm. before they're on vacation, it opens up the, the little girl's name Adelaide. She's watching a TV and on this TV is this uh, old school? Old they go school, old school, which I remember because we're both right. 80s babies. Yeah, the Hands Across America is playing on the screen. A, a trailer for this Hands Across America, this this thing that was uh, a movement to kind of just bring unity back in the day uh, and uh, with classes and income. But also, uh, I, I read this online because I man, after I watched this, I was right. like, pouring through articles about this film. Right. Like, yeah, it's great. To the sides, there's a couple of films to the side, which essentially gives away the entire plot of the film because mm-hmm. it, it's like what it, the, the film that Jordan Peele kind of based everything on. Yeah. There's Chud, Goonies, I remember Chud. Right Stuff, uh-huh. and basically a lot of that tells you what he's going to do with this film. Right. But uh, then I, we go on vacation in Santa Cruz. Yeah. I got to look into that because I didn't actually see the, the videos. Yeah. But that's, nuggets, man. that's the thing. It's the nuggets that he puts in there. Every portion of this film, every frame of this film uh, has, has like a meaning. It, it says something. And you get that from from watching it, especially if you have a keen eye. So <laughs> so after watching that, you see the Hands Across America trailer. Um, and then it's just like, oh, what, what does that what does that have to do with anything? Yeah, you know? yeah. And then you go into it and you and you see this family, they're going on vacation or whatever, and then the girl, she wanders off, and then they're at a carnival and fair on board. They're at a carnival fair. Yeah. And then she wanders off into this um But before we get there, I, I'm I'm a father. Okay. I would not just let my child be chilling like that. off, right? So to me, there's kind of system about the kid as well. There's something not quite right there with the kid. You think so? But we'll go into that a little bit later. Well, I mean, kids have like a... Yeah, well, well, also as a kid, I don't go wandering off to... to, Especially somewhere somewhere dark in, in a cave, basically... I was um, like, what the hell's up with this kid yeah. at that whole opening? So then at the and then you see the kid just get scared at something. You don't see what it is, you don't see what happened, but you just see a fear. And then it just cuts to the next family, which is going on vacation. And you assume that the 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 the, the family is going to like the same place, which they are. It's like, oh, we're going to the beach. The mom's like, ah, I don't like it. And then they go um to the beach. And while they're there, things are pretty, you know, mm-hmm. innocuous. They're having fun. They're having drinks with their other friends, a white family, showing the intermixing of uh, races and how it was just kind of a normal get together. And do we the have the flashbacks playing. at that point that we find out that that 
little girl that we first saw is now this grown up woman. Yes. Yes. That she was so going through things. Adelaide is L- Lupita Nyong'o's character. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, and she and she's been she's been afraid all this time. She's had a uh, fear um, coursing through her heart um, about this moment. Mm-hmm. This moment, and and uh, she she somehow just kind of goes to her husband. She, she has some PTSD when, of she doesn't mind going on vacation, but she doesn't going down to the port. I want to go down to the Santa Cruz. Cruz. But somehow her husband's like, "No, nah, let's just do it." And she's like, "All right, cool." And I'm like, "Well, if that was me, I would be like, nah, we going somewhere else.' No <laughs> way." You just want to stay at the at the at the cabin where that. Can we real real before we get any further? Let's show some love to like Lupita and uh, Winston, Mark, Duke. Winston Duke. Yeah. Yeah, my goodness. The, Did this like totally flip? How I know for me it was like a flip from Mbaku, who was a, one of my favorite parts of Black Panther. Winston Duke performed it brilliantly. Oh, to man. see him though go from Mbaku to this dad character was, was just great. the best. And I'm a dad. He was totally a, a nerd geek dad who, yes, I'm a big dude, but at the same time. I'm just a normal cat. I don't really want to fight, mother. Right. He just, he just well, geeky dad. Well, before we get really to that, cool. yeah, to see the whole, that. to see him go into the dad mode, um, which I thought was very cool because there's a whole spectrum of blackness out there, and you got oh, yeah. corny dads with Breaking corny dad down that jokes and, stereotype and everything. Uh, I thought that was really awesome. Now we've seen Lapita. She she is Kills amazing, but it was cool to see Winston do in this role. And I was watching an interview with him at the. Uh, at the Breakfast Club, where he was talking <laughs> was about say, was it the Breakfast yeah, Club, was the Club was bringing that back. We were talking about that yes. earlier, but he was talking about he was looking for something. Uh, he wanted to express himself Hell through yeah. his art, which is why he wanted to do this movie. And then, of course, uh, Lapita helps that anything she's in, it's yeah. going to be amazing because she. Just they went to school well. together, I think, at Yale. Uh, Yale, yeah, smart yeah. guys, smart, smart folks, brilliant, smart folks. folks, and they and he, and they play it pitch perfectly. The oh, family yeah. is played pitch perfectly. I love seeing black love. I love. I love seeing oh, yes. that. I think it's a very powerful thing. It's, yes. It's pretty amazing. Um, so that was really cool to actually uh, see and witness and put that on screen. Oh, yeah. And you see the family unit and, you know, there's not a bunch of art. There's not a bunch of weirdness. It's just a family. Yeah. You know, the kids in their video games. The girl is into her thing. She's a track star and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, they're on vacation. So, so they have fun. They go on vacation or whatever. And then somewhere... In that vacation, one of the other kids wanders off and he sees a man just standing on the beach. Yes. Bloody hands outstretched, looking Ooh, on. ooh, ooh. But before that weirdness, before they got to the beach, uh, as we saw in the earlier sequence with young Adelaide, when they were when she was walking before she got lost and yeah. found her way into the, the, the Hall of Mirrors, she passed by a, a man that had... A sign that said Jeremiah eleven eleven. Yeah. Now homeless fast forward, dude. homeless dude. Fast forward to before they got to the beach. There is a person that died at some place before they get to the beach, and he's being he pushed into the, the ambulance. Stretcher. And it's the same old man from when she was a kid, and then he has a sign Jeremiah eleven eleven, which will play into which, more. Yeah. But that was the first weirdness that triggered her. Yeah. Before the incident with her son. And the uh, man at the beach. Yeah. And what she was saying was there's a lot of deja vu coincidences that were happening. Yeah. Like the clock would hit 11 11. Yes. Uh, there's well, also. When we get there's to the al- yeah, there's also uh, that part happening. There's yeah. a lot of deja vu happening. So to her, she's like, something weird is going on. I'm just feeling really off about this situation. Yeah. Um, and then it continues to play uh, throughout the movie where there's little deja vu coincidences that keep popping up, that keep. Making her look back and say, "Ooh, something weird is going on," and you get that feeling. You start getting a little bit antsy with it. Yeah. Um. So that was that was very cool. Yeah. Um. So they, we're, we're at the house now. So, so now we're at the house. They came whatever, from the beach. And they came from the beach and they're chilling out. Um. And the clock strikes. The clock strikes. It was eleven eleven eleven. And then when, there's a family outside. How? What do you think of that? Would you have done the same thing? I family was, chill out. So first, I think the dad, it's you know, be he's so like, he was like, all right, cool, I'm going to handle this. He's yeah. like, hey, what's going on? He tries to talk to him, whatever. And then they just stand there. And then he goes and he does this hard thing like, hey, y'all want a problem? There's going to be a problem. There's going to be a so he goes, So, you know, then he goes hard. And which is they, totally not him, which was, he played that difference so well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How, like, we try to put on the, to, the we're, we're trying to, you know, put exactly. on airs. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm now, I'm sure. I got to protect yeah. the family. I got to do my thing. But then they scatter. 
The family scatters, oh, and we don't know what happens, shit. and then it gets real creepy. So he comes back in. Um, all of a sudden, then the, the attack happens and everything. And it doesn't take long before Jordan Peele gets into the crux of the story yes. and meet the family and figure out what is going on and realize that there is an underbelly of society that mirrors us, and they're dealing with everything that we're dealing with, but they have to deal they with it in a much harsher way. They don't have the resources, um, and they're basically carrying They're, connect- they're tethered. Ones. They're tethered. So this is the untethering. Yes. And she tells that, so, hey, this is the untethering where things are about to get real. And so you find out through her storytelling about the underbelly of society or whatever and how everyone has a double, basically, that is carrying There's their some wound. kind of project or something in... Yeah. And it just... And it's... um, it, it, There was a clone so that we can take uh, consciousness mm-hmm. away from ourselves and those people can actually perform some of the functions that need to be performed under here. And it's really cool because that's where you start getting into the layers of society yes. and how there are and people class. and classes and, and how there are people who are taking care of mm-hmm. us, basically, yeah. throughout this, this, this whole thing that we call life. And it's essentially, you find out, this is really a revenge story. Yeah. In a way, which just like... <laughs> Yeah, and then when we get to the end and all that stuff, and and so you know? it's it's crazy because you you find that out, and then you know the family starts fighting for their lives, and, yeah. and then you have the whole, all the layers of of race on top of it um, there because you find out that not only is it this family, it's, it's the white the, family, it's the white family as well, and then they're they're taken out immediately, which I thought was <laughs> insane. I thought was uh I thought was crazy and, and you get to see how, how this thing is unfolding. And then you get to see it's not just this family and the wife, it's, it's the entire world, world is yeah, going is is dealing with uh this situation. And there's there all the tethered are coming together and forming yeah. hands across America. Yeah. And it's very interesting was, that the tethered are in yeah. uh they're in red jumpsuits as yes. well orange jumpsuits that very much the, mirror the glove and the scissors yeah but they very much mirrors mm-hmm. uh you know like uh incarceration you know exactly but, which i thought mass incarceration was probably another uh key point in the immigration in immigration conversation well. in there um there's just so many different things that it touches on but basically at this point now people are getting killed and then we get into a little fun with the family you know yes. like where where you know they're they're talking about how you know how they're dealing with basically the apocalypse. Like, who's going to drive in the apocalypse? Is it going to be the daughter? Is it going to be? It was very doing? relatable and yeah. it was very cool. And uh, man, uh, the, was, the concepts in there were just insane. It was great, and uh, there were callbacks. The kid has like a magic trick, which which oh, yeah. which goes into later into the movie. Um, it's. It's so it's so layered and everything is so useful in there. Mm-hmm. There's I don't think there's a frame wasted uh, throughout the movie. Um, right now we've got up to the point where everybody's getting killed and the family is running around trying to figure spoiler. out what to do. Um, major and then, spoilers. And then okay, major spoiler is that um, these that this. Uh, so wait, Adelaide. Wait, wait, when, wait. Hold on. What's, what's the major spoiler? Well, oh, so as they're as they're they're killing, we start seeing a chain. Hands across America. Yeah. The tethered, once they kill whoever they're tethered to, they just go and put link up hands and start standing. And they and the news shows that this is happening from sea to sea. Mm-hmm. And, and it kind of goes to show you what would have happened if we would have tried to have hands and also, across America from sea to shore. They can't sea. really talk like us. They're again, they're a different version. They didn't, don't have an in, the, mm-hmm. the English language. So the only one that really could talk was Adelaide's alternate version. Right. So called red, mm-hmm. um, and they're wearing red. And so now here we go, major spoilers. We'll break it down. So when we first opened the film, there was this little girl who separated from the family, got lost into this weird funhouse. But apparently, that funhouse led to an underground system where is all where all these tethered right. people are living. Well, and, first, first, oh, first, okay, you go no, ahead. when when Adelaide, so it's revealed that she has seen her herself. Tether. And she, she gets seen, choked does, by her tethered that, person. Yeah. She yeah. chokes... The, the, so the tethered... Uh, the evil person back in the day chokes the real person... Choke the real Adelaide and then brings her down into the... the well, that's, the that's what we feel at the end. Yeah. So we didn't know... We didn't, we didn't know, know that yet. So you just know that they have met. So she they knew met. about all this yes. happening. But then you don't actually know that she... Know, like... That she switched places. That she switched places. So the person who we know now, and the reason why she can talk, but when Red came back, the reason why she was like 
to a husk is because she got choked. And that's mm-hmm. why her voice is a horse. And basically, oh. this became a revenge story. Right. And well, not because, because she, she was she, trapped for so long. But not only has she been choked, she hasn't heard anyone speak. Yeah, 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 she hasn't heard anyone speak for all those years. Yeah, yeah, so that's how you that's how you learn to speak is from hearing other people speak as well. Well, she already knew how to speak as a kid, right? But, but she hasn't heard any other. She teaches you know, all the, but she teaches the other kids how to, to how speak to, in how to guttural speak. tones. Yeah, yeah, because all they have is uh, uh, guttural tone. So that's yeah. how she's learning. From this mm-hmm. point on to speaking, you know, yeah. you kind of start speaking like people who have, act, like, I've started speaking like you, Patrick, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like I, I start saying you're, I start saying strangisms <laughs> now because of, <laughs> you know. So, it's a revenge, so this, so basically this little girl, they switch places, that right. is the major reveal, and it's all about her trying to get revenge, but doesn't know how to communicate it, so she sets this whole big thing up. To just show that there's this other society that's living. Right. And that's why they do this whole hands Because that's what she last knew and saw mm-hmm. before. And it's kind of like she's pissed off with her family. Because she's been gone so long. But no one knew that there was this alternate person living her life. Right. And then, and really, Adelaide didn't know she was the alternate until the very end of the film. And she flashbacks in this, but the son knows. Yeah. Well, really? no, she knew that she was the alternate because she knew what she did to get there. I don't. She. She. It was PTSD. I think she kept it. Oh, all that she the was way blocking back. it, it out. until the very ending Ooh, when she killed herself and when she killed Red when they're in the basement mm-hmm. and she kept on going and the sun was in the thing. That's when she realized because then you kind of heard some guttural laughter come across mm-hmm. at that very ending and then she's like she knew. It. It was her. Oh. Actually, yeah, she had a thing on her. Yeah, head. she was choking at And then, yeah. She went a little bit more than once he just killed well, the girl. You see, she that realized she, that. Yeah. Well, you see that. See, I didn't, I didn't get right. that. But you see that she's like chained. Yeah. She gets chained and she gets stuck in the bed as, mm-hmm. as Rad basically goes off and lives her life. And this is where those parallels come in because it's, it's almost as if, if someone were to take, someone were to take all the benefits of your life, and live, you know, would they be able to become uh, a positive member of society and do all the positive things that they've done? And what would your life be if you didn't have any of those advantages and you were trapped with the underbelly of, I keep saying the underbelly, with the tethers, basically. And she was literally tethered to the bed, stuck to the bed, and had to live with them. But then when she had a chance to escape that, the tethers needed a champion and she wouldn't she didn't leave them unto themselves she helped them she helped them devise a plan and figure out how to basically have the real this plan to get back yeah yeah she she, she was stuck that out and which she, i think is a great is a great parallel to what's happening uh in our country right now when you have a lot of people who haven't been heard the they don't have a voice they, they're disenfranchised mm-hmm. and there's one person who comes with comes to them and knows how to speak and basically what they're speaking into the world is this revenge or whatever like if you ignore that here in jeremiah enough, 11, is, 11 it's going to be hell it'll be hell you. to pay so um i just thought that that parallel was really cool too and like you said i didn't realize Okay, she might she might have just realized that she was trying to kill her. But I thought it was she was trying to kill that part of her. That part of her that 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 duality, that negative part of her, that the, oh, the evil part of her. She was trying to kill that off. I hear what you're saying. And say, finally, you are done. Like I am done with this. But she's part. really the bad person. But well, I mean, are the tethers she's bad or are they just no. Put in other place. place, and that was in which I loved from the, the interview too. Right. Not one was evil, right? But they're just. But it is an actual person. Yeah. So she's killed a, a person. Her, mm. her. Even though it's they had say, share this in conscious, but it was a living, breathing person. You took that person's place. Yeah. You know. But did you take so that place, kind of, or did that person take your place? Like, should we be in the place of the tethers? Like, should like what gives us? We should all live in you here, here, man. You know and what I mean? Like that, what. Like, I mean, it is. It's a mind-blowing thing. Like, yes. should we be in the place of the tethers and the tethers, you know what I mean, be up <laughs> yeah. here? That's and how so would good, the world be? Because they were actually able to work together and to create this thing and come together. But is that because they've been living in shadows? There's just there's just a lot to unpack and unravel about this. And I just love the subtext that he has put 
in the film. It definitely deserves repeated viewing. Yeah. And that's not even yeah. getting into the racial stereotype. Like, the first person who was affected by, like, this killing because they weren't aware, aware of the tethers. They weren't, they weren't aware of this. Like, they weren't dealing with it. Are the the white family right? They're killed by this because they're totally unaware. Oblivious. But the black family has been living with and dealing with these tethers trying to kill them yeah. for a while now, so yeah. they survive because they already know what's up. But the white family has well, no really, idea. She, the mother knew what was up. Because no, no, she ran no. Away well, from I mean, that. just literally in the story, gotcha. like the family yeah, yeah. has been fighting these, and they know mm-hmm. what's going on with. Yeah. The tethers and whatnot. They've been fighting them. They know that there's people who look like them. And they're fighting. Them. It's just, it's just like we're not even getting to that point. And then there's the racial aspect. I mean, oh my goodness. We have to analyze so this much. film again. It, it, this take, this like is a like a, a, with a our three people. hour review that we need right here. Yeah. So let's do what we do. Uh, thumbs up if you if, if we recommend it or thumbs down. I, I think y'all already know, but thumbs we'll do it just because. Yeah. Well, so, 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 there is no side on this because we already we already out. know. So oh, one, wait, oh. two, three, bing. <laughs> I didn't, there's no spoilers there. You Man, knew it was a thumbs up from this the This film was insane, dude. And so definitely much. recommend Marianne and Dale behind the camera. Uh, I hope we didn't spoil it too much. But it's I such a attention. powerful <laughs> film, man. Really Jordan is. Peele does it again. It really and he's going to give us tr- the new Twilight Zone. He's going to give us... Uh, what were we talking about earlier that he's linked to? Toy Story. So, well, uh, he's no, no, Toy Candy Story. Man. Candy, candy Man. man. The he's new giving candy us man. Candy Man. And, uh, yeah, he's also a voice in Toy Story and all that. Yeah, but, uh, just so, Jordan so Peele's killing it. Oh, uh, there was also a thing we posted up on the NRW page. Uh, people are wanting him to do the live action version of the Gargoyles, which would be awesome. If you don't remember the Gargoyles, one of the best cartoons of all time. Definitely, that, that would be amazing. Balls if he it was just a limited run, Gargoyles. though, right? Because I, I remember yeah, Gargoyles. Gargoyles. Yeah, but it was only like, how many seasons? I think like two, two seasons? or three. Yeah, two or three. yeah it, was, it, was, it was under three. Yeah. But fantastic series. If you haven't seen it, check I miss because I remember one, watching. I'm like, why isn't there more of this? Yes, because it, it was one of the first films to me talk about race and all these various social issues, mm. gun control. Uh, amazing, mm. amazing. But uh, us. us, we us. want us, us want to hear us. what your review of us was as well. Here's the last thing. Let us last thing. Last thing. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, yeah. but us is the same thing as us. That was another thing to talk about. That is literally like our country. Basically, yeah. is is kind of, it's like a it's like a parallel to. And there was collusion. Country. I don't care a fuck what the report <laughs> says or whatever. It is. All right, let's <laughs> not get into that. <laughs> Sorry, but anyways, you were you were you were bringing us out. Uh, I am Patrick Michael Strange. You can find me at Strange since nineteen seventy seven and at Temple Far East. I am Glenn Lawrence. You can find me at Level Up underscore Comedy on your Instagram. Also, check us out on Facebook. All right. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Uh, at the NRW is, I think, our Twitter or Instagram and at New Release Wednesday and as well Facebook. But what we really need to do is uh, like, share, and subscribe to us on our YouTube. Uh, the more followers, the more subscribers that we have, the more ability we have to give you bigger and better and greater bigger content. Bigger, better, bigger, better. All right? Oh, all right. Sorry. <laughs> That's I'm us from That's us. us. Rolling sound speed. Action.